Hi, I'm Dr. Romano, professor of organic chemistry here at Romano Scientific and the creator of the Dat Destroyer books. I want to go over some math today with you, and I'm here with Professor Blois, who is going to help us out on doing challenge questions for the DAT and the OAT exam. All right, Professor Blois, if you can do us the honor and do some questions for us. Okay, this is a type of problem, and we're going to have to decide whether the information in two given statements is sufficient or not sufficient in answering a given question. Now, this is a type that's been recently appearing on the DAT, and the preamble is like this. Your, the answer to the question is going to be one of these statements, A, B, C, D, or E. Let's read them together. Statement, uh, answer A. Statement one alone is sufficient, but statement two alone is not. Answer B. Statement two alone is sufficient, but statement one alone is not. Answer C. Both statements together are sufficient, but neither statement alone is sufficient. Answer D. Each statement alone is sufficient. And finally, answer D, answer E, statements one and two together are not sufficient. So now let's look at a couple of problem types of this sort and see if we can sort out the answer. All right, if X and C are integers, the question is, is X a positive integer? All right, we have two statements here, statement one and statement two, as read in the preamble. Okay, X to the 10th power is C, x to the 11th power is negative c. Is x a positive integer? Well, if I take that integer and I multiply it by itself an even number of times, whether it's positive or negative, the answer is going to be positive. Why? Because if it's an even number of times, you can always multiply them in pairs. Negative times negative is positive. You have a consistent amount of pairs of multiplications, it's always going to be positive. However, if it's an odd number of multiplications, like x to the 11th power, if, the, if x is negative, the result is going to be negative because you're arranging them in pairs. Each one of those pairs cancels out, cancels out negative with negative, but then there's that one left over. x to the 11th power is negative c. So the answer is statement two alone is sufficient. The answer is b. Okay, statement two alone is sufficient, but statement one is not sufficient. Okay, statement one is not sufficient to answer the question. Statement one is true whether the X is positive or negative. Now let's look at the next problem. If A, B, and C are integers, is A an even number? Here are the two statements to be considered. Statement one, A times B is even. Statement two, A times C is odd. All right, let's take a look at the first one. Does this narrow down the uh, information such that we can answer the question if A is an even number? A times B is even. Well, it could be. However, A could be either, what, what two numbers multiply out to an even number? Either A is even, or B is even, or both are even. It's indeterminate as to whether A is even or not. If B is even, A could be either even or odd. So. Statement one is not sufficient to answer the question. Let's look at statement two. A times C is odd. Now, think about uh, pairs of integers. What pairs of integers multiply out to an odd number? A and C, when you think about it, both have to be odd. And there are formal ways of showing this, but this is a, a, a time test, so just three times five is 15, uh, seven times nine is 63. Two odd numbers multiply out to an odd number. None, neither of these can be even. So we know from statement two that statement uh, that A is not an even number. A must be an odd number. So therefore, statement two alone, the answer here is again B. Statement two alone is sufficient to answer the question. Now let's go to the third problem of the same type. Given that A, B, and C are integers, is B an even number? Statement one, two A plus B is odd. Statement two, five times A times B times C is odd. All right, well, what do we know from statement one? I know that uh, two times A has to be an even value. An even value plus what gives us an odd value? Well, even plus odd gives us odd. So I can determine all, from statement one alone that B is not an even number, that B has to be an odd number. Now let's look at statement two. 5 times A times B times C is odd. In order for this product to be odd, both A, B, and C, all of A, B, and C, each one of them has to be an odd number. 
So we can infer the answer from questions from statements one and statement two. So that means the answer is D. Each statement alone is sufficient to answer the question. All right, and that is the, uh, what, the answer here. I'm going to put D for this answer. And over here, the answer was B. Okay. I don't know how bad you guys, my head is spinning, even on, this is a crazy question, but um, yeah. amazing question. Hopefully you'll take that question to the bank and you make sure you know it. These are very commonly asked questions on the DAT type of exams. All right, guys, I'll see you in study group. Thank you very much, Professor Blitz. Sure, Buckford. Bye-bye.